Welcome to the Pipe Organ Through the Ages. My name is Dr. Ryan Enright, and I serve as organist and accompanist to the Sacramento Choral Society and Orchestra, whose founder and director, Dr. Donald Kendrick, and president and CEO, Dr. James McCormick, inspired this project. Special thanks to St. John's Lutheran Church, Sacramento, where I serve as organist, for allowing me to use its majestic, obedient organ, Opus 80, found in its gorgeous sanctuary. In an age of turmoil, the pipe organ can serve as an example of unity through diversity. This king of instruments works its magic by combining voices of many different colors and qualities into a crescendo of harmony. In this first video, we will be presenting In the Beginning, where we consider the historic ancestors of our modern pipe organs. The pipe organ has a very rich history dating back millennia. We hear of the organ mentioned in the King James Bible in Genesis chapter 4, verse 21, which reads, Jubal, he was the father of all such as handle the parp and organ. However, the Hebrew word for organ is translated in newer, more linguistically accurate translations as flute or pipe instead. So it is doubtful that Jubal's instrument can claim much ancestral relationship to the modern pipe organ, other than the fact that blowing air was the motivating agent producing the sound. The true ancestor of the organ we know today can be seen in the hydraulis. The first instrument was created by Tisibius of Alexandria in the 3rd century BC. This earliest form of organ consisted of perhaps two dozen pipes made of copper with pressurized air hand-pumped from an airtight reservoir containing water. Happily, there exist remains of such a hydraulis from 1st century BC Greece. In the 1980s, a ruin was discovered in the Greek town of Dion. While excavating the site, a marvelous discovery was identified, what we now call the Hydraulis of Dion. A working copy of this hydraulis was completed in 1999 under the auspices of the European Cultural Center of Delphi and now lives and can be played in its museum. The hydraulis was used in the following ways. As a soundtrack for the Roman circuses, played by the wealthy in their homes, or as accompaniment to a lavish meal. Jumping forward now to the 4th century AD, from a Byzantine villa in Syria, a mosaic entitled Mosaic of Female Musicians. Showing first a woman playing two flutes, one in each hand, then another playing a glass harmonica, essentially crystal glasses tuned with varying levels of water, and a third woman on the left standing with hands playing on the keys of a hydraulis or pipe organ. Around this time, the water pressured air of the hydraulis was swapped out for a leather bellows. Even today, most pipe organs include leather bellows, although most are fed by an electric blower. Moving now to the medieval period, in 757 AD, the first Western European pipe organ with quote-unquote great leaden pipes was gifted by Constantine V, Emperor of Byzantium, to Pepin the Short of France. Pepin was the founder of the Carolingian Empire and was the father of Charlemagne, 
also known as Charles the Great. So Charlemagne may have been raised hearing pipe organ in the palace or the cathedral. In fact, in the year 812 AD, Charlemagne requested a similar organ for use in his chapel in Aachen, Germany, a chapel you can still visit today. The two types of organ in the medieval period are the portative, or portativo organ, and the Blockwerk. As its name implies, the portativo was easy to transport and could be played by one player using the other hand to pump wind. Or a second person could pump the bellows. The organist might play solo or accompany a singer or instrumentalist. Simple organs like the portative basically link one key to one pipe. If you have 24 keys, you have 24 pipes. Pressing one key opens the valve under one pipe, allowing the air to flow in and the pipe plays one note. Release the key and the valve closes and the pipe stops speaking. Again, one key, one pipe, one note. Sometime later, a creative organ builder realized that if he extended the box below the pipe, he could put more and different pipes into the same box or block. Now pressing that one key will play three pipes all at once. This is the main innovation of the Blockwerk pipe organs of the Middle Ages. Larger, heavier, and louder, they were no longer portable. In the early Renaissance, pipe organs evolved one more feature. The organ was given stops that can be pulled or opened or pushed in and closed. One stop controls the airflow to one particular rank of pipes. So if we pull the purple stop and the valve under the purple pipe rank opens, then that rank of pipes plays. Push the purple stop back in and instead pull the green and red stop and those two ranks play. Note that the organist depressing one key only has to lift one valve, the valve introducing air into the block box. The key does not have to open all three valves under each rank of pipe. The stops control those valves. Now, each pipe requires adequate air, so as you add pipes, you have to increase the size of the bellows blowing the air into the organ. Today, you have to have a bigger electric blower, sufficient to supply adequate air when the organist chooses to pull or open many stops at one time. But the organist just has to depress one key, which opens one valve leading into the block. Ingenious, no? In the case of the legendary 10th century Blockwerk organ in Winchester Cathedral, England, it required 70 men to tread bellows to provide adequate air to allow all the ranks to speak. Now, turning from the mechanics of the organ to the music, the Roberts Bridge Codex is the earliest known collection of keyboard music. It was probably intended for performance on a portative. Current thinking dates the collection to around 1360. The codex was discovered in England, but may have come from Italy. It consists of movements of dance music we can generally call estampille. An estampille was a dance work played before royalty by virtuosos on various instruments, including the organ. These pieces are in two parts, one for each hand, 
and the harmony is in parallel fifths and octaves. Many voiced polyphony would develop within a few generations. The following selection from the Robertsbridge Codex is an estampille called retrouvé, the French term for recovered. The music begins with a refrain, with each new section returning to it once again. So, we have reached the end of the beginning on our tour through the development of the pipe organ. In our next video, we will look at the huge leaps in both mechanics and musicality that came in the Baroque era. I am Dr. Ryan Enright. See you next time.